Hey there guys, welcome back to the Modern JavaScript Crash Course. In this video, we're carrying on taking a look at JavaScript built-in objects, and in this video, we'll take a look at the date object and some of its methods. As always guys, if you're new here and like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and make sure you turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so as you guys know, date and time are a regular part of our everyday lives, and therefore it makes sense that they feature prominently in computer programming, because there will be times where we might have to create a website with a calendar or an interface which sets up appointments or even creating a schedule of some kind. So it's important that these applications show relevant times based on the user's current time zone. So to achieve these objectives and more, JavaScript comes with a built-in date object and its related methods. So in this tutorial, we will go over how to format the date object in JavaScript. So as I've mentioned, the date object is a built-in object in JavaScript that stores the date and time, and it provides us a number of built-in methods for formatting and managing that data, which we'll look at in a moment. But first we'll take a look at the four ways we can actually instantiate a date with a date object. So the first way of instantiating a date object is creating one without any arguments. So let's just go and create a variable here called today, and we'll set this to the new keyword followed by the date object, close it off without any arguments inside of the parentheses. And then if we log this into the console, so we'll log in today, you can see it's given us the exact date of today. So Friday, November 5th, 2021, followed by the current time. So by default, this way creates an object corresponding to the current time and date according to your current computer system settings. Now the second way we can instantiate the date object is through epoch or also referred to as zero time, which is represented by the date string January 1st, 1970. So to show you guys what I mean, I'm just gonna comment that out and then we'll just create another variable called let milliseconds and we'll say new date close it off and just put a zero inside of the argument here now how this works is essentially it creates a date object with a time equal to the number of milliseconds that have elapsed since january 1st 1970 so if we log this into the console here so we'll log in milliseconds you can see because we put the value of zero in here means no milliseconds have elapsed since January the 1st, 1970. But if we were to pass an argument, so a crazy number inside here, so we'll just put five followed by a bunch of zeros. You can see now it's a different date. So it's saying November 5th, 1985. So it's essentially saying nearly six years have elapsed since January 1st, 1970, which is represented by this uh, crazy number here. And it's important to remember that date and time is broken up and printed in a way that we can understand as humans. JavaScript, however, understands the date and time based on a timestamp derived from Unix time, which as we've just seen is a value consisting of a number of milliseconds that have passed since midnight, January 1st, 1970, which is this value here, which gives us the date of November 5th, 1985. Now, the third way we can instantiate a date is through strings. So if I'm just coming this out, I'm creating another variable called let string date equal new date and then inside the argument instead of putting a number which will represent milliseconds as we've just seen in this example we're going to put in here a string and we're just going to create our own date so let's say october 4th 2000 and then we'll just log this into the console so log in string date and as you can see in the output, we're getting October the 2nd, 2000, and it's even given us the day. So that's the third way we can create a date using strings. Now, the last way we can instantiate a date is using the date and time components. So to show you guys what I mean, I'm just coming that out, create one more variable called let date component, and we'll set this to new date, and then close it up with parentheses. And then inside the argument, we specify components. So the first value is going to be the year, so we'll just say 1999, followed by the month, so we'll just say 4th, followed by the day, which we'll just put in here, 10, and then for hours we'll say 0, for minutes we'll say 0, seconds we'll say 0, and for milliseconds we'll also say 0. And then log this into the console, so log date opponent. So as you can see, we're getting May 10th, 1999. Now you may be thinking that May is the fifth month, but in JavaScript, January is indexed as zero. So that's why May would equal four. So those are the four ways we can instantiate the date object in JavaScript. The first way is without having any argument inside the parentheses, which will result in the current date and time your computer settings are set to. The second way is through the amount of milliseconds, which have elapsed since January 1st, 1970. The third way is through a string. And the last way is specifying components. 
So once we instantiate a date with one of these instances here, we can access all of the components of that date with various built-in methods. Now the two main categories of methods are the get methods and the set methods. And first we'll take a look at the get methods. So I'll delete all of this and create a variable called let my birthday and not assign it a value at the moment. And then we'll instantiate a string date object. So we're gonna say let birthday equal new date. And we'll insert a string date here. So we'll say July 10th, 1919, which obviously isn't my birthday. And then we'll just console log this first. So we'll console log my birthday. And then let's take a look at the get methods. So we'll go underneath this and we'll say my birthday equals birthday dot get full year which of course gets the full year of my birthday which is 1919 now we've also got the get month method so we'll say get month which returns six now again july in the calendar is actually the seventh month but again january on javascript starts at the zero now as well as the get month we've also got get date method which will say 10 so as you can see it's correct here now we've also got get day now the value we're getting here is four. And again, with JavaScript, zero equals Sunday, one equals Monday, two equals Tuesday, three equals Wednesday, and then fourth, of course, equals Thursday. So this is representing Thursday. Again, just remember that Sunday is indexed at zero. Now, as well as get day, we've got get hours, which is currently zero because we haven't applied an hour here. And then as well as hours, we've also got minutes, and this goes all the way down to seconds, and also goes to milliseconds. So it goes all the way down to milliseconds. Now the last method we can take a look at is the get time method. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and say get time. Now what this large number is, is a timestamp derived from Unix time, which is essentially just a value consisting of a number of milliseconds that have passed since January 1st, 1970. So with a get method, we're getting a timestamp of how many milliseconds have passed since January 1970. But you can notice on the output here that this timestamp method has a negative number. Any date prior to the epoch time will, will be represented as a negative number. As you can see here in this date, 1919 is prior to 1970, hence why this is a negative number. Now again, because the world clocks actually work in Unix time, all of the methods have a UTX method. So if we just delete all of this right now and look at all our options, you can see we can actually get UTC date, get UTC day, full year, hours, milliseconds. So all of these methods here have a Unix method. So if you guys wanted to work on Unix time, you can. So these are the get methods we can use for the date object, which is used to retrieve a specific component of a date. Now all of these get methods here have a corresponding set method, which is used to modify components of a date. So let's just change a few things around here. So we'll get rid of all those and we'll just grab the birthday variable, which is this variable here. So July 10th, 1919 and grab birthday and we can set the full year so we can say here 2003 and as you can see now it's july 10th 2003 instead of 1919 we can also set the month so we'll say set month and we'll put in here 10 which normally would give us october but again if you remember january starts at zero so that's why we're getting november there and we can also set the date so if we duplicate this down uh, and we'll just change this around to let's say 15. So it's gonna say November 15th now. We can also set the hours. So we'll say set hours and we'll just put in here, let's say 10. And as you can see now, the time has changed to 10 o'clock. We can also do minutes. We'll just say 10 minutes past 10. And again, similar to the get method, we've also got seconds. So as you can see here, the seconds now has changed to 10 seconds. So those are the corresponding set methods we can use to modify a date, guys. And to summarize in this tutorial, we've learned how to create an instance of the date object in which there are four. The first way is without having any argument inside the parentheses, which will result in the current date and time your computer is set to. The second way is through the amount of milliseconds which have elapsed since January 1st, 1970. The third is through a string, as we can see in this example here. And then finally, the last way is by specifying components of a date. And we also learn the get and set methods of the date object to access and modify components of a specific date. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the content, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video.